Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Don't forget, if you like the video, click on like and subscribe and talk about it on chat lines, wherever it is your social media activities and help us to grow and help more people. I'll talk to you soon. Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. Tonight, I wanna share with you some thoughts about anxiety and how to reduce anxiety. I believe in order for us to remedy anything or deal with anything, it is imperative and helpful to know what the nature of that thing is, whatever it may be in life, the mechanism, what affects it, what makes it happen, what can be instrumental to whatever it is that we find it um, in need of repair or dealing with it or managing it. So why don't we focus a little bit on where does anxiety come from? Well, anxiety and fear go hand in hand. And so when we examine one, we can relate it to the other as well. Well, if we focus a little deeply, we can see that anxiety happens in time. Now, don't freak out. <laughs> I'll explain why. <laughs> don't say the guy's gone crazy. What do you mean anxiety happens in time? Okay. <laughs> because for anxiety to happen, there must be thought. Other than the anxiety that happens in, let's say, uh, in light of um, physical danger, an animal, wild animal is attacking you, or you know you're about to be run over a truck, <laughs> or some kind of phys physical thing. Most anxieties they involve thoughts. And if you notice, pretty much animals don't have any anxiety unless it's a physical anxiety, some fear, some spooks them. Let's say if you're riding on a horse and something moves, a, you know, a plastic bag, the wind blows it, or something that it is not used to it, the horse, or a dog, or an animal, they could feel or certain sound they hear, something to do with their physical perception. So why is it that we are not limited to experience anxiety just the way the animals do and we go beyond it and we feel anxiety for things that are not physical? Because animals don't think, don't have the ability for thoughts and their anxiety is limited to their environment and the physical life, the moment, some physical threat. For us, however, we are capable and blessed with, blessed because this thinking has its own uh, curses and problems that is caused for us human beings. Since we are blessed with ability to think, then we are also capable to create anxiety when it has no reality to it. Since the brain doesn't understand any difference between virtuality and actuality, so when there is a thought created using memory information that has seeped through the consciousness and it's there, the brain doesn't understand the difference between virtuality and actuality, so it reacts to it as if it's reality, actuality, because the brain doesn't have an intellect, it doesn't know the difference. And when it doesn't know the difference, it reacts to it just as if it's a physical thing happening right away, and the body follows the power of the brain, that the brain manipulates it and makes the body react to something that is not even real, it's virtual, but since the brain doesn't understand the difference between virtuality and, and actuality, the body reacts in the same way that it would react if there is a danger or anxiety happening and it's a physical thing right away. It's facing with it. For example, if you're worried about what the neighbor thinks about you or what the neighbor thinks about the fact that, I don't know, you 
brought a tree home or you I don't know, invited some people or something that the neighbor heard that you were involved in or so you worried about something that you don't even know that the neighbor knows or not but the brain because a thought is created on that topic the brain treats it as if it's an actuality and a physical happening and therefore the body gets involved in following what the brain is commanding to it to react to it in a certain way. I don't know, you sweat or your heartbeat goes higher when there's nothing really in actuality happening, but a thought has created something that the brain is now reacting to it, not knowing the difference between virtuality and actuality, and then the body follows with some reactions and then you feel all that reaction. So thought has a lot to do with how the brain reacts to everything, let alone if that thing doesn't even have any reality, truth, or actuality to it. But that's what the brain thinks it is, an actuality, because it has no understanding that what's the difference between virtuality and actuality. It's a different world. Everything in that world of the brain is like if it's real, so it makes the body act as if it's real. Or things like, um, what if I lose my job? Or what if I get fired? Or what if I don't get that opportunity? Things that really hasn't happened and it's just a thought, but the brain doesn't understand the difference between virtuality and actuality, so reacts to all these things that you're conjuring up in here, and there's no fact to it. There's no assurance to it that it's really happening or no evidence to it, but it happened to be formed and there, and then reacts to it, and then body reacts as if it's real, because the brain thinks it's real, but in reality and actuality, the truth is not real. So they're, you know, a crazy leading, <laughs> not that crazy. So that's, then you pay the price for it. So let's go back to the spooky topic of anxiety happens in time. Because anxiety for it to be produced needs a thought. And a thought happens from an inventory that it is stored in consciousness. Memory. And memory is not now. Memory is the past. So when there's a thought produced, we've talked about this in detail in other videos, but here I don't want to go deep into it, but when, when a thought is produced, is produced in memory. And memory is not now. Whatever is not now, it's in a different time. And memory being a past, so if we are creating some thought which is based on the information in the memory, memory being past, memory being not now, and not now means time. We're in a different time. Whether it's something that you think about, something happened, or something you're worried about, something that is an experience recorded in the memory and you're thinking about it and it occupies your mind and you come up with scenarios that could create anxiety for you or whether it's something that you're concerned about what it could be, what it could happen and that's in the future, that's again not now and not now means a different time and future is again we create a time. So when we go back to memory, like for example, you know, I had a stomach ache last night, I don't have it now, will I have it tonight? So last night, which is not now, I had a pain, now I don't have it, so last night to now, not now, which is whatever it was, not now, and now, is time. So when you compare what it was to what it is, what it could be or will be, you create time. So thought creates time. Time is thought. So when you go into the memory and then conjure up something or remember or get worried and anxious about something, it is because thought and that thought has taken you away from the present moment and taken you to a time that is not now and therefore there is an anxiety created. So in other words, unless you're not in the now, 
you can create anxiety. In other words, if you don't want to create anxiety or reduce anxiety, you should do your best not to be in any time and space other than the now. If you're not in the now, you're in either in the memory, which is the past, or you're in the future, which is not now, anything other than now, the possibility of anxiety is there. But if you're in the now, there is no memory, there is no time, and the moment is safe. There is no information there for you to bring anxiety to you, unless something happening right now, which that should be a physical thing. So in order for you to reduce anxiety, try to focus on the happening and the efforts that you're making in a given moment. Be in the present moment. When you're in the present moment, you've taken thoughts out of the consciousness. You're not in the past, you're not in the memory, the past, and you're not conjuring up something for the future, so you're not outside of the now. And in the now, the present moment, everything is clear. There is no doubt, there is no questions, there is no ambiguity, so there is no anxiety because there is no fear, and fear is what? When you compare what it was to what it is to what it could be. And in the moment, there is no what it was, there is no what it could be. It's only what it is, and what it is is, is clear. So hence, the anxiety doesn't reside in the now, in the present moment. So if you can stay in the present moment, you reduce anxiety. Anytime you have anxiety, you can do a few things. First of all, meditation is very important because it takes the thoughts from memory, any time other than the now, the past, or future, and bring you to focusing on a certain thing depending on what kind of a meditation that is. But it brings you to that moment that where there is no thought produced. You focus on something and that thought has nothing to do with any experience in the past or any possibility of fear or um, happening of the future, you're in that moment and that moment is about meditation, so thought stops. When thought is not produced, time is not produced, and in that moment of the now, there is nothing other than safety. So meditation is very important. Also simple things such as a double breath, you know. quickly gets you out of the anxiety, which, which we have talked about in, in other videos. Parafacial nuclei system is when you can manipulate breathing rhythm rather than the pre buttsinger complex, which is a normal breathing system. So when you manipulate a different rhythm of breathing, like a double breathing, it's a shortcut to getting yourself out of the anxiety and that could be helpful. But Generally speaking, if you stay in the moment, focus on the moment, what you're focusing, what you're preparing, what you're making the effort in, in that moment, the present moment, you will be safe from anxiety and you will be able to reduce anxiety because there is no thought, hence there is no time, and when there is no time, that means there is no thought, and when there is no thoughts, there is no anxiety. I hope that would be helpful to you, at least help you to reduce anxiety and have a little bit of a shortcut to get out of it and know what, happen, what happens with anxiety, how it's produced, so you can help yourself to bring your balance back and enjoy your day. I'll talk to you soon.